Cool. Um, well, the opposite of Tanya, I have way too many slides, so I'm going to try and blow through them really quickly, and I'm sorry if I don't. Uh, the last thing is I have a cold, so I'm really sorry. If I turn away and go like this, it's because I'm trying not to sneeze on you all. Uh, fair warning. Um, cool. All right. Uh, so this is monitoring ephemeral infrastructure with OS Query. Uh, clicky buttons. This is me. Uh, I go by Clippy a lot of the time. I'm on Clippy. Or I'm on Slack as Clippy, so you've see, probably seen me on there. Um, I've been working on OS Query for about two years. I've written a management server for it. Um, and what I do now is cloud security mostly. I automate a lot of stuff. Uh, I do some detection, and I work in OS Query, which is pretty cool. Um, I'm going to talk about what it means to monitor uh, Kubernetes, ECS, Docker stuff, uh, auto-scaling groups, anything like that. Uh, what changes when you have infrastructure that just goes away, can only exist for 10 seconds, something like that. Uh, why OS Query is still cool for that, but it does have some pitfalls. Um, and what we can do to sort of mitigate that and still get the insight that we really want from OS Query. So it all begins with OS Query and questions. That's basically what we use OS Query for. Um, so the first thing I'm going to talk about is what goes wrong. This is one of my favorite scenes ever. Um, but this is what happens when you first try and use OS Query on infrastructure that just spins up for five seconds and goes away. You end up with a lot of problems. Um, this is the heart of OS Query. I think probably everyone here has seen this. If you haven't, uh, it should be relatively easy to grok. Um, this is select everything from Debian packages every 60 seconds. Pretty straightforward. Everyone should probably understand this one. Normally, that works pretty well. Uh, you get your data back every 60 seconds. It's great. But if you have the case of where you're launching something into uh, a new auto-scaling group, for instance, uh, and you have a health check that says, is this still alive? Is this working? Uh, this is what happens or can happen. Uh, so you fill out your new resource. Uh, first check runs and it fails. For some reason, your service didn't come up. Second check runs again, still failing. That's not good. You should probably look into that. But at the same time, we're actually waiting for our query to run, right? So it starts at zero. It's ticking along here. We get to 20 seconds, 30 seconds. One more time, we get to 40 seconds. That health check fails. All right. Well, now our auto-scaling group will destroy our instance. OK. Well, our query's not run yet. We get to 60 seconds, and that never happens. Our instance is now gone. The data we wanted is gone, and we effectively have no visibility into something that just ran. Now, whether something malicious happened on that, I don't know, but we want to be able to tell what happened to our infrastructure regardless of what's happening, you know, maliciously or broken. That makes us very sad. So let's try something else. Uh, people use Kubernetes here. Raise a show of hands if you're using Kubernetes in various ways. Okay, so we've got some people who are familiar with this. Um, Kubernetes. You have a whole bunch of nodes out there. They're spawning a lot of Docker containers. We're just basically going to try and get a list of Docker containers from our Kubernetes nodes. Uh, I'm taking a slightly contrived example here. This is what's called a batch job. Basically, that does is spin up some containers to run a job, then those containers go away. This one is about as dumb as it gets. They spin up, they sleep for 10 seconds, and they die. It launches five of them at a time. Pretty straightforward. So same example. We're going to start our query timer here. 10 seconds or 30 seconds or whatever later, our jobs spawn. We have five jobs now running. They're going to run for 10 seconds. So cool, our jobs finish. Now our query runs. Well, we just queried. We got a bunch of data back. And by that bunch of data, I mean nothing. When you, when you select Docker containers, and this is not an event table, you're going to get what's currently running, meaning you're not going to get anything that happened in between the last time you ran. So that's kind of what we end up doing. <laughs> um, so we have some problems now, right? Like we're looking at OS query. It's really cool. And suddenly things are failing. Scheduled queries aren't working that well. You can go shorter, but there's still that interval. Like unless you're hitting things right on the mark, you're not going to catch it. Uh, and environments where things change rapidly a lot, you have the chance of missing a lot of different things, right? The faster they change, the more you're going to miss. Not cool. 
Um, that's a quick note, don't follow those examples. <laughs> Generally, you don't wanna do these things. That's just a good example and way to demonstrate these things. Um, now, everyone who knows those query well is now saying events are gonna save my life. Um, event tables work a little differently. They sort of are a, you know, a sequential list of things that have occurred. Uh, they will change from you know, every single thing that is, has changed in your system, but they're not the answer completely. And this is why. OS Query does this really great thing. This is straight from the OS Query docs. Gives you a great way of all these details. But here we look at how many event tables there are versus how many just regular tables there are. There's a little bit of a visibility gap there. I'm not gonna say it's nothing, but you know. Um, events are awesome. I really love events. However, they're not gonna give you everything, and especially a lot of the things that people are looking at for compliance or anything like that. Those are not event tables. You're gonna miss all of that data. So here's the next solution. We're just gonna try and make them go as fast as possible. We're gonna query every five seconds for every table we have. Sure, why not? This is what happens when you do this to your poor instance. Uh, yeah, that seems like an accurate representation. Um, and that's because queries have a cost associated with them. Anything you wanna do is going to actually incur a performance hit. If you wanna do a lot of queries very quickly, you're gonna have the scheduling conflicts. You can run your instances out of uh, memory. I've run a 64 gig instance out of memory using OS Query, it's not pretty. Um, you can peg your CPU. Uh, you can get queries that don't finish before the next version of that same query kicks off. That sucks. Um, Watchdog is really great for saving you from doing all of this, but it can quill, oh, excuse me can kill OS query frequently enough that nothing ever runs. So that's not that effective. Um, yeah, so what the hell do we do? Like, that's basically the question now. Um, so now I'm gonna talk about the part that actually matters. Uh, what you can do to sort of catch up with these things and fix it. Um, deployment and management is sort of the first step to doing all of this. If you're using ephemeral infrastructure in any way, I'm guessing you have some sense of doing config management or the infrastructure as code, something like that. Um, I'm not gonna tell you how to do deployment using Chef or Puppet or anything like that because their entire conference is dedicated to this. Um, you should have a way of deploying. That's as much as I'll say for like, you know, prescriptive things. It's very different. This is my law about OS query and incident response and detection. <laughs> I just made this up, but I can almost guarantee you that the thing you don't install OS query on is the thing you most wish you had OS query on. Um, if housed without fail and incident response. Um, when, so when you're gonna do deployments, however you do it, get it as close as possible to a guarantee that OS query will be on whatever you launch. I don't care how you do it, but make it the first thing or the second to first thing, whatever you can do. Uh, AMIs, base images, the first run of your config management, and it scripts, back, like whatever you gotta do. Um, that's all I'll say on the, the installation side of it. Management, on the other hand, I have a lot of opinions. I've written a management server, therefore I have way more opinions. Um, but if you wanna disagree with me after, I would love it because this is all really interesting and constructive stuff to talk about. Um, if you're gonna do ephemeral infrastructure, TLS server, management server is a mandatory thing you must have. You must stop managing your OS query configurations in your files on your instances. It just doesn't work. You're gonna have to change too much and on-demand queries or live queries or ad hoc queries or the terrible names we've come up with this that no one can decide on are essential to all of your operations. Uh, things that your management server really does need to have. Uh, you need to be able to assign uh, a default configuration to anything that signs up no matter what. Uh, if you don't have anything already set for it, absolutely have something that you know will work as much as possible. Um, the second one is things are gonna spin up and down a lot. They're gonna be of all different types. Have a way to actually assign the particular config you want to those things quickly and automatically. Do not do this manually every time something enrolls. It's a terrible idea and you'll kill yourself. Auto enrollment, funny I just mentioned that. Um, there's a concept of approving nodes when they connect to your OS query management server. Uh, it's gone back and forth. Some people have very strong opinions on it. When it's ephemeral, you're not gonna have enough time to approve a node before it may disappear, at which point 
approving it doesn't make any difference. And the worst thing that ever happens, if someone were to maliciously enroll a node onto your management server, you can now see what they did. Mm -mm. Seems not a terrible thing to me. Uh, On-demand queries, uh, if your TLS server doesn't support on-demand queries, kick it out the door. Um, I think every single one that I've ever seen does, but just FYI. Uh, and the last thing is enrollment queries. Um, this is something that I've been tossing around as an idea. It's, I've only seen two people really implement this in servers, but this is the idea of a query that runs every time a node enrolls and runs immediately and runs once. Uh, those are actually super, super helpful to make sure you get some data about an instance no matter what. Um, this sort of goes without saying, but your management server has to be able to keep up with all the terrible things you're doing to the rest of your infrastructure. Um, things go up and down really quickly. Uh, especially crucial are the databases that are managing all your hosts. And if you're running a ton of on-demand queries or uh, launching them as instances start, be careful that that queue might get really backed up and so have something that can scale to actually manage all of those things. Um, so the database itself is actually a very interesting one because when you have ephemeral infrastructure keeping around a node entry in your database for something that no longer exists and hasn't existed and will never exist again is actually a bad idea. Uh, they come in, you, you register for however long it is, and use a TTL to actually get those out of your database so you stop polluting it and keep it more as sort of like a semi-stateful or caching system for the nodes that are actually registered. Um, also, if you can make use of caching for loading packs, all that sort of stuff, um, whenever a node enrolls, it has a burst of queries that will really stress things. If you've got 3,000 nodes launching, uh, that database server suffers immensely. Um, so yeah, so when we put all this together, I'm gonna hand it off to you. Uh, um, when you're starting out, uh, start really simple. Uh, figure out the data that you must know, that you really want to know, uh, and just start there. It's really tempting to say, I'm gonna take these huge query packs and apply them to everything, and I'm gonna get all the visibility in the world. It's great. <laughs> it's also overwhelming, and there's a good chance you're not gonna be thinking about specific use cases where you're actually gonna end up missing things you didn't think about. Um, there's also a lot of activity around sizing and planning and how quickly you can scale. If you're ingesting every query in the default packs for every node that ever spins up and you're doing that all as the node spins up, <laughs> you're gonna blow through terabytes of data pretty quickly. Uh, and depending on what you're paying for, Splunk, <clears throat> it may really, really, really hurt. Um, so anyway. Uh, the last one is buffering data is okay. It's really okay to not see your data instantly. It's a lot better than never seeing it. So even if you have to toss a whole bunch of data into S3 or whatever that is or your storage system and look at it later, still way better than not having it. Uh, your incident response team will thank you later. Um, cool. Host configurations. Uh, so this has been touched on by a few people now, uh, but this is important when you're doing it ephemerally. Is that a word? Hmm. Um, do the bare minimum thing to be able to get your host to enroll in your management server. Uh, don't worry about specifying a config that does you know, X, Y, and Z because you could always change that with your management server. But, as Zach mentioned, there are some pitfalls. Uh, there are some flags that you may only set on your instance at the start of your OS query process. So if you want to collect that data, those usually are event data tables, which are important, uh, be aware that you do need to actually have those enabled. Uh, you don't have to have queries that are actually catching those things, um, but you do have to have them enabled for the option to be there. Um, this is a big one. I would love to push this idea some more. Uh, enrollment queries are really cool. Um, they're on-demand queries that run when you start up a node or an instance. Uh, they basically use the mechanism of on-demand queries to pull. So depending on what your polling time for that is, uh, they may ro run within a minute of that instance picking up or even a couple seconds if it's really short. Um, but it's good for things that you know you absolutely have to have. Like if you absolutely know you always wanna have 
the, you know, the IP address of your node that comes up or something like that. These are really good for that, and it helps you a lot with correlation down the line. Uh, if your management server doesn't support these, you can actually just implement these same things via an event framework uh, using webhooks or something like that. So if you have a logging pipeline that can send out alerts, have it call the API of your management server and tell it, guess what, every time this instance spawns or whatever it is, go run these three queries. It's an extremely helpful way to get data about anything that ever launches. Talking about this, there are some things that you will never see launching, at least not it directly. Uh, Docker containers are a wonderful example of things that will spawn, but you cannot and you don't want to install OS Query into because they're running on your instance. We can have an argument about whether you should install OS Query in Docker containers later. Uh, but the fact remains, you're not going to generally see these because there's no Docker container events table. What there is, is the process events table, which gives you a process for every Docker container that was ever launched. If you want to get those Docker containers and run the query of, give me my Docker containers, you can trigger that off of the process event of a Docker container spawning. That's a really great way to make sure you're not missing things. It's possible to miss them, don't get me wrong, we can always mess that up, but it makes it much less likely. Um, so yeah, and then use your monitoring system a lot for this type of thing. Uh, yes, so decorators. Decorators save lives. Uh, if you're not familiar with decorators, uh, they are bits of information that are wrapped around every query that you have. Uh, so for example, if you wanna know the IP address of a system, you can add the IP address to any query you have that's now in the log of that query that you ran so that IP for select users from whatever is now joined together. And that information can help you tie things together when in an environment like an ephemeral environment, IP addresses, uh, subnets, so on and so forth, are all reused, right? You may have things that reuse, you know, IP addresses every 10 minutes, there's a pool of, of you know, whatever it is. Uh, device, block devices, all that sort of stuff. Um, and here's why they're important. If you've ever gone through three weeks of NetFlow data and tried to figure out what IP was talking to what at a certain time, if you have an environment where that IP can get reused, boy, are you screwed. It really sucks. You have to make an educated guess at best as to what's going on. If you happen to have a query that happens around the same time that has that IP address in the decorator, you're home free. You answered that question in about 10 seconds. The other one is a guess at best. Um, this is the last thing that you really should understand about doing all of this, in, uh, especially in on-demand queries, is your max time to an alert. Uh, there is a significant window based on polling, scheduling, all that sort of stuff, before you may get an event based on something that happened on your instance or on your node. Uh, the time between the event happens, when the query goes, is your first interval. Then you have to know what the interval is between your on-demand polling. So if you're not familiar, on-demand polling actually queries every X amount of seconds to see if there are any on-demand queries to run. That means that if you have a five-minute on-demand query poll, you have to add five minutes more before that query that you want to run into response to something ever gets picked up. So there is an actual gap of time where you might not be able to respond to stuff fast enough even if you've scheduled these things to respond to events. So understand what that is. Um, and figure out what the guarantee is for that time because you're gonna wanna try and drop it without turning your servers into fire. Um, when they're not working, they tend to give you less visibility. Um, so I suggest not blowing them up. Um, cool. And I just blew through that in like 10, wow. Um, but this is me, ship it, that's all I've got. <laughs> oh, and uh, the slides are online if you want them, uh, because apparently I didn't give you any time to read them. Uh, you can get me on Twitter uh, or email. I work for a company called Segment. We're hiring for all types of security people. 
they sent me out here, so I have to say that. Seems fair. Uh, I will take questions. Yes, sir. I have a question. No. <laughs> yeah, what's up? One of the things that people commonly do in a FEMO is offer containers, which have very uh, immutable sort of single purpose containers. Yes. And in that model, what are you querying? Well, it's a really good question. How many versions of that same Docker container do you have? I mean, I don't know. I <laughs> so, I, th I think what we typically use that for is what iteration of that particular container uh, has been run at the given time, right? It, depending on rolling updates or whatever it is, relaunches, uh, the version of that container or the tag of that container may change, even though the image itself that's being referenced may be the same. Uh, and so querying which container version did this sort of thing is actually a good thing to tie to. Um, yeah. That sounds like what you would put in a decorator query might be there? You, you could absolutely put that in a decorator. What is the, what's the table are you querying? Like what data are you trying to extract from an immutable like single usage? I will tell you what the Docker tables tell you and there's a whole lot of them. So unfortunately I don't have an example of exactly what all that data is because I don't remember all the info in that table but it's there's like six or seven Docker tables. So, yeah. Other questions? Nice. All right. I will release you back five minutes early. <laughs>